All right. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the uh, end of the weekend. Sunday night here, about uh, 10.42 p.m. California time. January 5th, 2025. Monday, tomorrow. Hope everyone had a good weekend out there. Latest earthquake activity on the globe shows a continued swarm of movement down there across the North Island area. Around the White Island area, the Bay of Plenty region, seen uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity. Uh, checking out their uh, earthquake movement around this volcano, White Island area, still sitting at alert level two. Uh, nothing changing, but man, can you see a, a lot of the earthquake activity here on the graph uh, throughout the last 24 hours? So a pretty good swarm of movement underneath this area. As uh, far as California activity goes here, let's go ahead and take a look at the 2.5 map. Well, that uh, pretty much removes all of them except for one 2.9 earlier this afternoon along the uh, Mendocino fault line there. Aside from that, general small microquake activity out here in the last 24 hours. Really nothing of any interest out here in terms of uh, uh, major swarming or anything like that. So kind of a little quiet. Let's give a quick glance here at the trimmer map here tonight. Cascadia trimmer consists of, voila, there we go, zero. This has been uh, pretty quiet here for about a week. Not a whole lot going on there across the Cascadia for now. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet as well. Nothing going on there across Yellowstone. But uh, I do want to double check, make sure we're not missing some type of swarm going on there. Uh, there's a six-pointer from earlier this morning showing up on a couple seismograph stations. There is uh, two earthquakes, it looks like, here in the last couple hours. Very small quakes and one earlier today as well, but uh, those earthquakes are not being reported there across the Yellowstone area. They'll probably get to them tomorrow morning as far as the USGS goes. Earthquake activity out here in the oil fields here, including a region around Louisiana where we've had a, uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here in the oil fields out here in this region. Twos and threes, the latest a three-pointer out here across the uh, morning sport mooring sport looks like louisiana in uh some oil fields out there eastern portion of the country pretty quiet uh hawaii well, let's double check that see what we got going on here refresh this inflation map here see uh if there's anything changing still going up in terms of inflation here across the kilauea volcano i believe it's still at a pause status after erupting there for a couple days Um, obviously there's still going to be some glowing and whatnot across the lava field and around the crater area where the most recent fissure activity has opened up, but I don't see any, uh, active fountaining or lava flows up there for now. We'll have to check back on that tomorrow, see if anything kicks back up, but, uh, a little pause out there. Aside from that, let's see what we got here across uh, the area. Ethiopia still seeing some earthquake activity down there force across the rift boundary. It's going to be this area right here. Um, and they've had a number of earthquakes. Nothing changing here in terms of volcanic status. Still seeing uh, a little bit of activity there on the seismograph stations. This is a just a simple seismograph digital layout there of a station very close to the rift boundary in uh, this area where the uh, earthquake activity is occurring. Uh, there's a six-pointer from earlier this morning that did show up quite nicely on this seismograph station but since then as you can see there's been a number of earthquakes here across the area mostly fours but uh, this is bringing up the total tally here to about 84 earthquakes of various mag well decent magnitudes up to a 5.7 uh, is the largest earthquake that we had here um, on uh, looks like about two days ago so still a little uncertain on where this is leading to more than likely a potential eruption across here we'll definitely keep an eye on that area Uh, let's see, for the rest of the region out here, man, it's just active out here uh, down south in New Zealand. That's quite a bit of activity stirring up out here, including a, uh, now i got to see where that one's at. Let me bring up the uh, earthquake map here from the EMSC model see somewhat of a larger quake out there around North Island. I just want to take a peek and see where that's at. That 
That is going to be a 4.3 earthquake, uh, fairly recent, offshore, off the Hikarangi subduction zone, which sits right about here. They got the uh, lines marked pretty nicely across that area. Uh, but the, most of the movement here has been up here around the White Island area across that, across the region here. So keep an eye on it. Obviously, some elevated movement happening there across New Zealand. They got a number of areas of concern. You got the super volcano, Taupo super volcano there. And of course, the Hikarangi subduction zone, a number of volcanoes. Definitely uh, keep watching that area. Uh, Taiwan southward, typical movement across the crunch zone here. Nothing big happening for now. Uh, let's see here. Middle America Trench following that six-pointer. Obviously got quite a bit of aftershock activity there from that uh, 6.2 in El Salvador area. Shaking things up. Fairly shallow earthquake. Aside from that, uh, generally quiet but normal. This is normal conditions there across the Perucelli Trench. The, Af the uh, Atlantic area. Not a zip zero going on. All right, let's talk about space weather activity here real quick. Still looking at a uh, elevated flare threat here for an X flare, 25% chance, 75% for the M flare. And that is due to this sunspot right here, currently uh, flaring. 39.74, right? 39.47. <laughs> Backwards, 3947 is the culprit of a bunch of M flares and recent X flare activity here in the last couple days. And it, if you look here, starting to measure up and get into a more Earth directed view, we got to watch out because that could throw off some further X flare activity and subsequent CMEs, which will be 100% Earth directed for the most part. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, aurora activity potential here over the next couple nights. That's generally due to the high-speed solar wind stream from a couple different coronal holes over the last few days. But uh, nothing major in the forecast for now, as far as the auroras go. But we'll check back here because uh, I have a feeling 3947 there is going to blast off some more uh, decent flaring, right? Uh, decent solar flares. Pretty active out there across the western limb, but uh, really no concern. A uh, fairly long filament area here that could blast off. You never know. Got to watch that. Uh, so a number of areas here that uh, pose some hazards here for the Earth in terms of uh, direct CMEs and whatnot. Check back on that uh, tomorrow. Look at all those flares, though, in the last couple days. It's uh, quite a bit currently coming down there from a sea flare. All right, Storm Prediction Center, uh, remainder of the night. Looks like a little severe weather out there across this region early Monday morning uh, for some slight risk category out there across the area. 5% and 2% for tornado activity. Wind and uh, not so much hail, but just a little bit of wind out there. Uh, look at the numerical models. Seen a lot of uh, cars out there slipping and sliding across bridges here today uh, in this area of the country due to ice buildup on the roads. Uh, that's probably going to uh, stick around for a little bit. Now, snow is looking more and more likely as we head into the uh, middle of next week here, this coming week, across Texas. They do get some snow out there, uh, but this looks like a little bit of a decent measurement. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Also, some ice in there. Uh, so, it looks like some of these regions that just got through dealing with that ice storm may uh, see some activity stirring up again as we head into late next week. And that cold air just wants to sit around here. Look at that. And that's uh, it's a little depressing because that means that, for the most part, ridging is taking place out here across the West Coast as the jet stream shoots way up north and then comes way back down south on the, the uh, front side of the high pressure, bringing with it a lot of cold air. And that looks to be the pattern out here for, man, a good remainder of the month. A lot of cold air out here. That's not going away. Looks like that's sticking around here for the, uh, potentially for the remainder of January for a good portion of the country out here, except for California. And that's, I mean, there's no rain in the forecast for California right now. That's a little scary. We look at the total accumulated precipitation runs out here. Look at that. Man, this almost looks like a, uh, I don't know, a, a summertime pattern out here with no rain at all being recorded or forecasted here for the uh, well into January time period. 
Goodness. Uh, total snowfall out here. There you have it. This is just a guesstimate from the uh, GFS model. Uh, that's that's a lot. I want to check out a different model here. Let's go over to the windy map and see what these guys are forecasting here for the country in terms of snowfall accumulation. A lot of people love the snow. It adds it adds a serene, peaceful, beautiful scenery to it. You know, I'd rather have snow than uh, 64 degrees and boring. Uh, where's our snow at? Uh, rain accumulation, new snow. So we're going to start from uh, today all the way, um, I guess, into early next week here. So still, even this model here, the ECMWF model, showing a uh, what looks like a decent amount of snow build up here across this area. If that takes place, that's 10 inches of snow around Dallas area, Abilene. Yikes. So that's the ECMWF, the GFS model here, painting a similar scenario, a little bit less there on the measurements. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, either way, it's looking more and more likely that this area is going to be uh, having to deal with quite a bit of snow here coming up. HRR model does not go out that far. We'll have to check back on that a little bit later. All right, folks. Um, one earthquake way up north here right now. It looks like a two-pointer. Fairly shallow crustal quake there in Washington. Aside from that, I uh, hope everyone has a good evening out there. Seismograph stations uh, showing a little bit of earthquake activity. China Lake. Little station there in Chile, uh, showing a little spike of an earthquake. But uh, aside from that, things look uh, normal out here in the plate tectonic world for now. To keep an eye on New Zealand, definitely uh, swarming down there. And um, have a good evening. We'll see you guys back out here in the Monday for the Monday morning update. Got to get up uh, somewhat early, so I'll, I'll be up here after hopefully a few hours of sleep. Have a good one. Stay warm if you're out there. Uh, across the rest of the country. Enjoy.